Hey guys, it's your girl, Lindsay Schoolcraft. Welcome back to my channel. And today I have the lovely Richard Shaw, Cradle Filth, which we're both in. And this has been a highly requested interview, so... Um, highly requested? Yeah, uh, on Twitter. A lot of people have asked it, it, for you. What counts as highly requested? Is that like more than four people? Because I don't really know... One, about one tweet a week for the past few months. That's, that's it. We're, get, we're getting up into 20. Highly requested. Yeah. Well, you've been requested more than anyone. Oh, okay. Even Danny, I think. They just want me to do Danny's makeup. Yeah, Fair. eventually. Yeah. Well, that'll happen one day, maybe. <laughs> but uh, are you ready to just dive into this? And I'm, see how I'm goes? ready. Okay. Go easy on me. <laughs> It'll be all right. So okay. I, I know Richard on a different level. We're in close, uh, what is it? Close proximity close all, all the, the time. time. We, we spend about four months of the year together. So these questions are things that no one else has ever asked you that I want to know. Oh, okay. And I may have heard the stories before, but I want okay. my fans to hear. All right, all right cool. let's do this. So. The minute you got the call, what happened? How did it happen? Uh, which call are we talking about? The actual ask to audition or the you got there the job two. call? There was two, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, because uh, what happened was uh, Matt, our old sound guy, gave me a call about two o'clock in the morning going, would you be willing to audition for Cradle of Filth? Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, because uh, I'd known him for years and um, it was just one of those things where I was like, okay, Let's let's see. Let's. I'll I'll say yes because he told me they got a whole tour. You would just be on tour for the for month, uh, and then that's it. Yeah. Happy days. It Put it on your CV. You've done right. that kind of thing. Uh, got a call the next day from Big Martin, yes. our old tour manager. Tour manager. Basically, yeah. just give me a quick interview just to say like. Make sure you're not an Make, asshole. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> do you drink? Do you do drugs? It's like no. So no. Um, <laughs> he was like, "You're as good as hired." Then he got me in touch with Martin, our drummer of mine. Yes. yes. Um, who basically said, "If you can learn Born in a Barrow Gown and Cthulhu Dawn, I think the one was." Yeah. Yes, it was. Those were um, the two. Those were the two. I was asked to audition, um, and he says, "If you can get it by to us by tonight, that'd be fantastic." And I was like, still working, teaching all day, and. Um, somehow I did it, and I still to this day think I only got the job because I was the person who handed the audition tape in on time. Yeah, there was so, a lot of people, and they just, they're like, oh, can I have a week, can I have five days, and you and Ashok were like on it. We were pretty on it, yeah. sometimes. But, and then, as what happens in the music industry, you don't hear from anybody for a while. <laughs> A go, while okay. being like a week. <laughs> well, yeah, to be fair, it wasn't too bad, but it was like three or four days later, I got an email from Danny saying like he watched the video and would I be interested in doing the European tour. Um, and that was it. And it was like, right, Martin got back in touch, went, here's the set list. Um, see you a couple of days before the first show. And that's the first time yeah. I met everybody, including you. So Yeah, we went out for a burger. Pretty crazy. Well, went out for a burger. I had a bean burger. But, uh, yeah. And then it was like, right, now let's crack on and, and get rehearsing and see what happens. And that was really the first time I met the others. Cause I think you got there first. Yeah, Cause I got there like do. a day early for some reason. Yeah. I, was, I wasn't CC'd in an email that said, no, we're not going to have three days rehearsals. We're going to have two days. So I turned up like a day early. Yeah. And, um, and then you messaged saying you were in town. Um, and we just met and actually grabbed the burger together. And that's the first time I actually met you. Yeah. So and then it was unreal. just getting to know each other, and then the next day, the following morning, is when I pretty much met everybody else. And rehearsals and were rehearsals quick. And rehearsals were quick. Yeah. Two kind of, well, the rehearsals are only about three hours long or something, because obviously it's full on for Martin. Yeah. Um, so we probably went through all the songs like twice for two days, and then and like we the were good. And it was pretty good straight off the bat. Mm -hmm. So it worked. Yeah, we knew we had a good chemistry, and as far as I was concerned, um, I was and we in the band as a session guy, and then on the last day, Danny was like, okay, do you want to stick around and write the new album with us, which became Hammer of Witches, and I'm still here. So. It, and that was, like, that end of that tour was really interesting, because by the end of it, we all became friends, there was tears, yeah. and yeah. what happened when you got home? <laughs> what did happen when I got home? You told me you just started to cry, <laughs> like, that's uh, the best much. thing I've done with my life. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much, because it was like, well, what now? It was like, because it wasn't 100% official that I was in right. the band or anything, but it was like, yeah. I had already got to do what I wanted to do my whole life, which was like mm -hmm. a big tour in front of big crowds and 
as far as I was concerned, that was it. That was going to be my only chance to do it. And then when it was official, I was in the band. It was like, this is a happy time. It is. <laughs> a very then, happy time. <laughs> I have to ask you because, like, you've, you've spoken about it here and there, but hometown shows. Coming back in 2015 after writing Hammer of the Witches, our first show yeah. was in Nottingham. And it was Nottingham. Yeah, Nottingham. Yeah, yeah. And it was, what was that like? That was scary. Yeah. Really scary because it was like it was a very emotional night because mm -hmm. it was at Nottingham Rock City, which is for those of you who may know that heavy left handed candid DVD was shot there, which I was actually in the crowd. Did, um, I don't think many people know that. Yeah, I was in the crowd as a fan. Yeah, you're like, in I was, a DVD. I, was never, I was, wasn't a massive Cradle of Filth fan, but my brother was, and it was around the time of his birthday. Yeah. So he got his tickets, and then it ended up being a DVD shoot. And, so I'm in the crowd somewhere on there. And uh, I meant to, for Cradle to go back, and it was the first show of the entire Hammer of the Witches World Tour. Yeah. Which, one was scary enough in itself, because Nottingham Rock City, I've seen countless bands there since I was about 15 years old. Right. Uh, so it was like Mecca for me in a weird way, like the musical Mecca, as well as Download. Like, Nottingham Rock City and Download were li literally the two biggest bucket um, list moments for me. What does Download mean um, to you? Like, Download's been everything. a massive part uh, of your life. I don't even think the fans know that, like, yeah, your history I, of Download. I, I mean, I live really close to Download, and I've been every year since 2005, and it started in 2003. I technically went to Ozfest in 2002, which was on the same grounds. I'm jealous. But Download <laughs> technically started in 2003, and I couldn't go to the first two because my parents wouldn't let me because I was doing, like, my my A-level exams at the time. So sweet. Um, so they were, they were like, no, you can't go. Uh, but I went every it year. It was for the best. <laughs> yeah, I was doing my exams. Uh, yeah, the first year I was doing my A-levels and the second year I was doing my first year of university. So I right. had exams literally the day after download. So there was no way I was gonna do it. So there was no way I was gonna go. But 2005 and every year since I've been to download. So that was also a big, moment for me when we got to play the main stage last year so yeah. but yeah going back to rock city one that was yes. pretty crazy because that was the first time with i i played nottingham rock city but we're also playing songs off hammer which is songs that i had written yeah so that was really strange for me like the songs that i had input in that i'd written riffs and ideas in my living room and then all of a sudden i'm playing them on the main stage of nottingham rock city it's the first show the whole world tour with friends and family in the audience it was what's your mate's emotional messing, moment like sorry to interrupt but what's your, ma your mates messing with you too like they were trying to make you laugh they're trying to make me laugh and yeah because yeah. they keep it grounded <laughs> so obviously i've got the character that i've kind of adopted with cradle and mm -hmm. every time it, i was looking at them it was half disbelief because they'd not seen me playing cradle so they were like right they're the like hell? what is going on and half they knew what to expect so they just kept trying to put me off yeah, I think someone had a pair of underwear. They threw it like I, I can't remember. Wrong, they, they did something. Yeah. And they're like you came off stage. You're like really. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but but that was a very cool moment. It was yeah, doing Nottingham Rock City and Download the two biggest bucket list moments for me, mm -hmm. and I got to do them a few years apart. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was speaking, very emotional. It, it you you've had a lot of. Emotional roller coasters yeah. being in this band for yeah. sure. I it's, think we all have. We, we, we know how lucky we are to be in this situation. Like, I get to tick off a lot of my childhood dreams on a daily basis. Yeah. Like the fact we're doing this inter in interview. Uh, <laughs> in this beautiful in, in, hotel room. In a hotel room <laughs> in Mexico yes, City. This is we, true. A place yeah. I never thought I would actually visit in my life. And now right. I've been here like three times yeah. in like three years. Yeah, it's so a lot. So it's pretty crazy. It is. <laughs> Um, speaking of um, playing songs that you've written, I have a question from a fan, Ryan, and he asks, like, out of all the Cradle songs you've written and recorded, are there any that are really close to your heart on the last two albums? Oh, that's... It's a big question. Yeah, <laughs> they all mean a lot, because you never... I never really write songs expecting them to be on the, the albums. I just or play write live. or play live. Yeah. Uh, you just kind of write them and go, I hope, one, that everyone else in the band likes this, and then two, I hope the fans like this, because mm -hmm. I just write what makes sense to me and motivates, moves me. If I don't get excited about what I'm playing and what I'm writing, how do I expect anyone else to? So I'm just trying yeah. to write things that mean a lot to me. Um, but the, the the one off the top of my head that means the most is probably Blackest Magic in Practice because it was almost like that took on a whole new life. It that again, I wrote that in my did. living room. 
Yeah. Uh, and I wrote little bits of it on the Russia tour that we did. 2014. Yeah, I wrote little bits of it yeah. in there, but pretty much finished the song at home. Um, and then when we played that first, first show at Nottingham Rock City, I remember us playing that, and yeah, that was a weird moment. And then it, from there, it took, kind of took on a life of its own, even to a point where I remember Dan Presland from Neo getting quite drunk. <laughs> In, uh, I can't remember where we were. Bless Dan. We're in, I think we were in LA. We've we spent we so much Hollywood, time Hollywood. together with them. Yeah, yeah. and I remember he, we, we went partying down the Sunset Strip and we got a taxi into Hollywood because uh, we played the Mayan Theatre. That was a fun night. It was a very cool night. Yeah. And we went to the Sunset Strip and just Dan Preslin telling this taxi driver about Black is Magic in Practice and teaching him how the riff went. I remember um, that. Me and, me and Zen were with you in the back. And yeah. I think, was Brendan there too? I think Brendan I was think, there. Yeah. I think Ashok was there. I can't, oh, I can't remember. Oh, so funny. But, we, but then we, got dro- <laughs> we got dropped off. And um, next thing we know, the, the taxi driver just rolls down the window and starts like singing the riff to Black is Magic in Practice. And I was like, this is getting weird now. Well, I think, <laughs> was it our first show last year in South America? Was it Chile? No, when was on the Hammer of the Witches World Tour? We had somewhere in South America our first show. The crowd was singing the riff. Yeah, like that, that to was, you, that, that was, was just too much for That's, all of us. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's awesome when you get crowds that do that, and it's again, it's a riff I wrote in my <sighs> living room, <laughs> and then people sing it back to you and sing back guitar solos and riffs. It's that happened at pretty crazy Grass Pop when we played um, Right Wing Live for the first time and the crowd was singing my part to me. Was that Hellfest? I, I think guess. Hellfest was, was the first it time. It was one of the it. two yeah, and, and it was just, it just throws you off entirely. Mm. Like you didn't, you just start these little ideas and you don't think that they become these big things and then the crowd's singing it to yeah. you. It's, it's, uh, it's a feeling <sighs> most people don't get to experience yeah. and we're very lucky to do that it's, it's pretty humbling to do that it is definitely and then the other thing i want to ask because you say this a lot <laughs> oh tours of vacation for you it is why <laughs> it is well um because basically I, I work quite a lot when i'm back home as well with teaching you and do. playing yeah. the musical theater and karaoke bands acoustic bands tribute bands people don't know how busy I, you are I'm, when you're home. I, I'm always busy I just love playing guitar and I'm in a very privileged position to pay the bills making music yeah. and I'm in a very fortunate position that when we're off tour I have lots of friends that I do lots of things with and get called up to help out with musical theater stuff and yeah and it's teaching I love teaching so I, and um, it keeps everything tickling over and the creative juices going and I'm still playing and, and active when I'm not on tour so I'm very very lucky in that sense and that is a lot of work because that's a lot of learning songs uh, to teach and to perform on a regular mm-hmm. basis of constantly learning songs oh, in know. all different styles um, keeps my reading chops up because I read music as well so the musical theatre thing keeps my reading chops up um, just keeps my hand in loads of things back home like god forbid if i ever did leave cradle or something happens i've right i've still got s- stuff to come back home to where i'm still playing guitar for a living so yeah. again I'm, i know i'm lucky in that sense but i work pretty hard at that when i'm back home so when i'm on tour i only need to worry about playing the cradle songs yes and the rest of the time <laughs> i do absolutely nothing like <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, well i see i see, I see read uh, watch films, still write and play guitar like, on days off yeah. and stuff. So I'm very productive, but it's a more relaxed productivity, I would say. Yeah. And uh, so that's why I always treat tours as a, as a holiday. It, to me, it's, I don't know, a holiday in exchange for a few shows. That's the yeah. way I see it. That's so, how you always say it back then. Yeah. That's why I holiday. never take it for granted. It's like, I work two hours a day when I'm, <laughs> we do like a, yeah. a half an hour sound check, an hour and a half show. Uh, on this particular tour, it's about an hour and a half, and the rest of the time it's just like hurry up and wait. Oh, we do so much of that. Yeah, it's, wait it's around hard. all day, and then it'll go, 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 go. Yeah, go, 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 get, get so, on stage. So at least the waiting phase, at least I'm somewhat productive with writing and reading. Yeah, we do a lot and feeding on Feeding my mind and, and trying feeding not your to belly. Be feeding my belly. <laughs> just trying not to get, I don't know, too complacent. Yeah, definitely. And and the other thing that I wanted to ask, because I was in the band about 
I don't know how long, much longer I was in the band before you showed up. I can't even do the math, about a year. But in all our travels, is there still anything on your bucket list that you want to see that you haven't seen yet? There's still a lot of places. I mean, yeah. we've not done like Africa, for example. Yeah, I'd love to go to South, South Africa. Africa would oh be amazing. God. New Zealand would be amazing. Iceland. Uh, Iceland. There's still a lot of places we've never been to, yeah. that, which is surprising considering how long Cradle's been going. Mm -hmm. And even in the five years I've been in the band, we've done a lot. But this is our third this, world tour, isn't it? Yeah, or yeah, yeah. This is technically the second because it's like we did two and a half. We did a, before the Cryptoriana <laughs> cycle. We did a lot of touring, but not really a world tour. Well, you did a world I tour. I did when I first joined. Yeah, uh, the, like tail end of a Manticore cycle. Mm -hmm. But Hammer of Witches wasn't really a world tour. It was just a lot of touring different places. Yeah, because there's a lot of places we didn't get to go to, uh, which we made up for last year on the Cryptoriana tour. This is right. And then we get to do it all over again this time. So because the demand was there for a second yeah. leg, so we're doing it. Yes, and we're lucky. Um, so right. yeah, so technically this is kind of like the second world tour in two years for me. Yeah. So, but we did a amazing. lot of touring before that. Yeah, we do. We're we're one of those bands. I think we're gone about three to four months of the year. Yeah, which you know, it's part it could of the be game. worse. It could yeah. be better. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. It's <laughs> traveling. You learn. You lose things. You um. You run to your flight because you don't want to miss it. You <laughs> learn how to pack. Like it's like Tetris for a luggage case. Yeah, that's the thing. Living out of a suitcase, you kind of yeah. get used to it. But when I'm back home, I have a couple of days at home, and then I'm like, okay, I'm bored now. I want to be back on tour. Like, and, and that <laughs> happens to me too, especially when you go to like, and this falls into my next question. When you go to like a live gig at home, and you're like, oh, I'm happy for them, but then you start getting the itch. You do get you the itch. Yeah, you see your friends performing on stage. Like I'll go see like Epica or Flesh God, and be like. I kind of want to play a show, yeah. but um, I was gonna ask you: Is there like a metal band out there that you still love seeing live that you'd like just drop everything to go see? I'm sure you have a few. I have a few, but like just my still my favorite bands growing up, like especially yeah. metal bands. You say so, like yeah. for instance, Metallica. Like I knew you'd say that. <laughs> like, Metallica is still the band that I will cancel many things for, but uh, I <laughs> cancel everything for. Yeah. But, Sorry, but, mom, it's your car. birthday. Mm -mm. It, oh, it's amazing. But weirdly enough, like they did, they did a show in Birmingham, and I got my tickets like as they do. They go right. on sale like nine months in advance. Yeah. They had a show in Birmingham, and then we announced. The opening date of the whole Crypto Around the World tour on that date, so I missed Metallica. Uh, and then I got my, my tickets for Metallica and Ghost and Bocassa. Um, uh, they're playing in Manchester Stadium. Yeah. Uh, and it was in the middle of festival season, midweek. Now, the whole time I've been in Cradle of Filth, we have never done mid show weeks during festival week. So I don't. thought, I'll be fine. Yeah. Then we booked a tour of Russia. So I'm missing Metallica again. <sighs> Uh, and Ghost, which for those who know, I'm a big Ghost, big fan, Ghost so fan, which yeah. so I'm in a tribute band. What are you called uh, again? Pope, Pope, Pope Stars. Stars. Yeah, Pope yeah, Stars. it's great. I love it. Well, I watch yeah. it because I love I love costume uh, and image. And, and see, your costumes look amazing. Thank you. You've you done know. a good job. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun playing that stuff. Yeah. And, uh, it's easy when you're in the mask because you can kind of again act the part mm -hmm. uh, when you're hiding behind. I suppose it's the same as Cradle when you're hiding behind makeup. Yeah. It's a lot easier to adopt another role or personality. Yeah, I have a little bit of a evil witch, like Maleficent thing going on stage, but then the crowd makes me happy and I'm Lindsay again, smiling ear to ear. So you don't break character and I love that about you because you're right in front of me on stage. Rich Lake performs right in front of me. My keyboard's here and Rich is, Rich, you're my guide. I have you up in my in-ears and I listen and, so if um, I make a mistake, you make a mistake. Oh, I fall down the stairs, yeah. Okay, okay. It's pretty brutal. I'll have to remember but that. <laughs> Rich doesn't break character. If you've ever seen this live, you know he puts on a spectacular performance. I hide behind a keyboard, so I'm just like, woo, fly like my arms. Um, but I have, I have one more question for you. Something that the fans don't really know is you're a huge movie buff. You yes. love movies. And I want to know, so far this year, favorite movies and movies you're looking forward to? Oh, that's a good question. I'm trying to think <laughs> what I've watched this year so it's far. it's hard to think because of all the flights too um you can I, mention last year yeah it's fine I, too. i'm trying to think what was there yeah because all the flights and everything um green book was a i still need to see that. green book was fantastic yeah. uh bad times at the el royale i loved like proper old okay. school pulp fiction i even watched it again on the plane on the way over here like i thought it was just that's the one I recommended to you. Yes. I sat next to you. Bad yes. Times at El Royale, I thought was yeah. brilliant. I can't remember if that came out 
uh, like at the end of last year or early this year, I can't remember. Um, those two really stick out. Oh, I've seen so many films. I wasn't ready for that question. But, I knew, I knew you then, wouldn't be. <laughs> and then, and then the ones, ones I'm looking forward to, like the It Chapter 2. Yep. I loved the remake of It. Oh, it was I don't so think good. it was a remake because it was just a whole different it was kind whole, of vibe yeah. to the original. So um, I think they did that one really, really well. So I'm looking forward to Chapter 2. What about the Queen movie? The Queen movie I loved. Okay, thank you. I, I loved I, it. I, I loved it. As a die-hard Queen fan, you are <laughs> die-hard. It, it's kind of weird because as, as much as I love all bands, it's pretty much Metallica, Queen, Prince, yes, you love and Prince. the Beatles are kind of Aww. like the, the, the magic four for me. Um, mm. So being a die-hard Queen fan, I loved the film. I saw it twice at the cinema. I cried during the performance. Yeah, it yeah killed it, it. it is it, incredibly emotional yeah. thing, and everyone talks about um, Rami Malek as. As, um, as Freddy, but everyone forgets how good uh, Joe Mazzello and uh, Gwilym Lee are as John Deacon and Brian May. They killed it. It's, it's frightening, actually frightening when you hear oh. Gwilym Lee as Brian May, uh, uh, I think, and Joe Mazzello as John, John Deacon. It was just like the mannerisms and the speech and everything was spot on. I think that's why it's a bit unfair because everyone knows Freddy as the larger than life character as Freddy, so everyone was like, oh my yeah. god, he did a brilliant job as Freddy, which but he did. He did. But because Freddie's star shone so brightly, and being the front man, and his story, and I don't think people realise how good the other guys were. When you know this being your <laughs> fan, like, you know, you know exactly. This. And yeah. Brian May being my absolute all-time guitar hero, Aww. it's it was frightening. So Gwilym Lee, well done, absolutely yeah. superb performance. But um, I thought that the film was amazing. But if you're watching it as an historical document of what happened in Queen. Right. No. Well, no, 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 no. Um, Those things did happen, but not in that order. No, and <laughs> then, the, the other thing is... it is a brilliant, brilliant film. It is, and there's a, there's British humour in it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which, my, I went to see it with my mom, and she didn't get it. Remember when they got in the fight, and they nearly threw the kettle? Yes. And they're like, not the kettle! I was crying, laughing. My mom's like, why is that so funny? I'm like, blasphemy, don't use the kettle, don't destroy yeah, the kettle, the you thing. need your tea. Well, well there's, there's the thing, especially you understand touring with Brits now. Exactly. It's like, we need our tea. Like, we, yeah. we are big coffee lovers as well. But Making a we mash. We need a tea every now and then, a mash, which yeah. is Derbyshire for tea, for those people who were ever confused by the, if they saw the uh, bus invaders with our mash Oh, that was so much fun. Dream talk. come true. That Another was pretty cool. True. That was very yeah. cool, yeah. We get to do some cool stuff, really. We do, we do. Including this interview, which we do need to wrap up now. So Fair enough. thank you for being on my channel and thank you guys for watching. And I will tag all of Richard's uh, social media below so you can keep up on his adventures with education, music education, movies, music, poke stars, cradle of filth, and whatever else travel you get up to. I just, <laughs> I'm very open with my social media and the fact that I just like to share what I get excited about. It's great. And, um, that's one of the benefits of social media. Social media can be a, a huge ball ache, but I love it in the sense where <laughs> it is. people turn each other on to new music, new, new muses, art, new mu muses, music, yeah. art, literature. I I love it for that. So many yeah. bands and books and artists that I probably would never have heard of if it wasn't for one of my inspirations going hey check this out totally and then i become a fan so and it's weird to think we're in that position too like we don't think about it too much but no, i think just because we're fans of music at the end of the day we probably don't because yeah. we're in it we don't think about think yeah. about that too much but yeah no, you're, if you do think about it too much oh uh, no it, that's it. when i'm like lying down at night i'm like why can't I that's, that's like, when <laughs> the ego gets elevated and yeah you don't need that you want to keep that ego down we're yeah. pretty chill we're pretty cool like that and that's like i enjoy following you on social media so Check them out below, and again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.